So at this point, the game's more or less functioning. Uh, I just want to do a couple things like uh, keeping score, um, and then once that's done, uh, doing like a start and a, an end screen. Okay, so to do the score, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, and I'll, uh, I'm will i going to put it underneath the buttons, so that way the buttons are always available. So I'm going to make a new layer underneath the buttons, but above player, and I'm just going to call this one text, okay? And I'm going to go over to here to my uh, text here. Let's open that up. And uh, i got to find a font that doesn't look terrible. Let's see. Oh, God, these all look terrible. Okay, I don't care. We'll just go with this one. Uh, 48 and black is fine. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put it up here. And uh, let me see. I'm going to left align it. And I'm just going to say score. And I'm going to set it. And we'll just say zero. And that looks... That looks acceptable. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, okay, and I'll just do that. I'm just gonna put this in the left corner here. All right, so that'll be score. Um, da, 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 da. That's all fine. So just however you want to look, just put that up there. Now the other thing we need to do is make sure it says dynamic text because we're gonna be writing into this. Um, and we also need a name. So I'm just gonna write this um, score underscore. Oops. Uh, let's call it score. It works for me. Um, we'll call it score. Uh, and we got to do, so I got to put a name in there. And then um, we also have to click on embed because what's going to happen is uh, in order for the code to have access to this, um, right now it can only write the, anything in these letters. But obviously there's going to be a one, a two, you know, it's going to keep track of whatever. Um, this is going to change. So we have to actually... Um, embed the font. So I'm just going to do all. We don't need all of them, but I'm just going to go ahead and do all. And uh, what is this font called? This is Eris Bold IT. Oops, Bold ITC. That way I know what it is. And I'll hit OK. And what that's going to do is it's basically going to add it to my library right here. You can see, um, and that will allow uh, it to have access to it. But you got to make sure you do the embed, otherwise it'll act all weird and stuff. Okay, so there's my score. Uh, I have a way of interacting with it. Now I just got to put the code in there. So um, what I'm going to do is, uh, okay, so uh, we got score. And um, let's see. Uh, all right, so I need to do a couple of things. I'm going to need a variable to just hold my time. So I'm just going to do a variable, and we're just going to call it time, which is really not a good name. Um, we'll call it score time. It'll be better. Score time, uh, and it'll be of the type uh, number, and we're gonna set it equal to zero. All right. So yada yada yada. Now what I'm gonna do is I need to um, uh, see. This one says obstacles loop. I guess we'll. Well, I'd like to keep everything kind of clean. Um, Okay, uh, I guess after this, I'm just going to make another um, code snippet and enter frame. Okay, you could just add it to this one, but I want to try and keep things clean. Uh, I'm just going to call this um, score counter. Okay, that'll be the name of it. S score counter. All right, and we can get rid of this. And um, it's going to be really easy. It's going to be time. Is gonna be plus equals. Why does I keep doing that? Plus equals um, one twenty fourth. Oops, twenty fourth. And then we're gonna do time, or it's not time, is it? Uh, let's see. Well, I think I called it score, right? Score dot txt is gonna be equal to score space. And we're going to concatenate it, and it's going to be string, and it's going to be time. Or actually, yeah, I think I left it as time, right? Is that what I called it? Time. Oh, I called it score time. Sorry. Wherever it says time should be score time. Control C. Sorry about that. Score. Score time. It'll be That one will still be called score, and this should be called score time. Score time. Okay. All right. I'll just explain it real quick. Okay. So what we're doing is we just have, um, this is going to run every frame. And then I made score time equal, uh, plus equal 124th. Now, the reason why I did that is that every frame, if you look at my timeline, I'm running at 24 frames per second. So 
that'll mean that it'll be a score of 1 at 24 frames because it's going to add to the score time 1 24th. So it's going to take 24 of these uh, in order to equal 1. Okay. Uh, and then I just did score.text. The text is how I interact with, um, let me select this. Da, 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 da. I think it's somewhere in here. Maybe you can't see. Well, it's how I, it's how I write inside of this. Okay. I thought you could see it in there. Um, score.text. And then I'm putting in score space, you know, little thing, whatever. And then concatenate, which means I'm going to add this to the end of it. And I want to add score time. But the problem is score time is a number and it's not, um, it's not text. I know it seems kind of weird because you're like, why can't you just put it in there? You can't. So, um, but, but what I can do is I can run a function just called string and it will convert this basically into a string and then I can attach it. And so that should theoretically work. Let's control enter, command enter and see what we get. And there you go. Now we have a, a, a score. Um, I don't like how far over it's going. It's like super far. So I'm actually going to take this and truncate it to like that and control enter. And I think it should cut it off if I'm correct there we go uh, I'm gonna go a little bit more because I'm getting a little bit of another thing there okay let's try this again and good so now it's giving me point whatever seconds yay all right so um that's all working pretty good so now I got a score and I got that and that's fine so uh what I want to do is have the game end okay so I'm not Back this up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Control S. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take everything we have and we're going to put it on frame 2. We're going to make a start screen that starts on frame 1 and then the game on frame 2 and then an end screen on frame 3. And that's the, uh, the lump sum of it. So I'm going to grab this to this and I'm just going to click and so I just, sorry, I should, this hold shift click and I'm going to grab this and move it over to frame 2. All right. Now we just have an empty frame 1 here. So for this, uh, what I'm going to do is... Uh, uh, I'm going to do the rectangle tool and you can do whatever color makes you feel good. Um, I guess we'll just, I'm just going to put, oh, you know what, actually I'm going to make a new, um, a new layer and we'll just put this as start screen. Oops. I don't need it to be capital start screen. Okay. Uh, and so everything will be on here. So I'll go like this. Um, that's fine. And just to make it, you know, more interesting, I'm going to go ahead and uh, where are you at? Cone side run. I'm just going to put this here so that there's something, you know, whatever. Uh, it's just the animation of them running. Uh, and then we will also put um, text. So let's see. Uh, and I'm just going to write, um, what's the name of this game? Wow. Well, uh, well, i got to change the color here let's go ahead and do it black and we're just going to say um running running cone i guess is what i'm going to name it okay and that looks fine so yeah and then i could put start but uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and add um some action script to this so i'm going to go to the code snippets and we're going to have um a mouse click event uh oh, i need something yeah and uh, we'll do this. Okay. Oh, and he doesn't have a name. Uh, let's, let's call it Start Game Cone. All right. So just so it has something. I'm um, just so going to do a mouse click event on him. Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. I just want to make sure that works. I might have the right stage dot add listener. I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. Dismiss all. So you do have to do that. All right get out of there all right so it's got to be stage stage dot add event listener so now as long as I click anywhere on the stage um it's probably in all the rest of the link uh, access property method no oh oops dismiss all hang on a second uh, I got to do this too so also on this first frame I got to do a stop because uh, right now it's going to play to here. It's going to go do 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 And even though we can't see it because this is above it. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and we want to do... Uh, where are you? Up oh, The timeline navigation. I want to double click to stop. And we're going to stop it here. So I'm just going to control X and put that up here. 
like things would be kind of in order here. All right, so stop. Now that shouldn't give me any errors, hopefully. Let's see. Great, okay. And if I click, you can see it says mouse to click, okay? So I can click anywhere on the stage and it will do whatever. So I'm gonna do function, uh, mouse click event handler, and it's gonna start the game. So um, if you look, I'm just, I'm on the first frame here. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is on that click, when you go to click, I want to go to frame and stop. Click on that. Ugh. All right, we're just gonna do it by hand. Um, so go uh, to and stop, and it's gonna be frame two, like that. And that should work. Go to frame and stop two. And if I click, and nothing, oh, it is working. Uh, if you look, this picture is held here. I don't want to be here. So I'm gonna click on here and I'm gonna hit um, F7 which will create a empty keyframe or you just right click and uh, where you insert blank keyframe. Okay, now let's try this. All right, and so I'll click and then I can start playing the game, so on and so forth. Okay, so the start screen works. Um, no big issues there. Oops, I don't know what happened there. I got stuck on something. Um, so the start screen works, that's great. All right. Uh, so no big issues there, but, um, I need to make an end screen as well. Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and save that because that's working. And, um, I'm going to say start, stop screen. I'm also doing both in the same thing. Start, stop screen. So, um, basically do the same thing. I'm going to take this and uh, copy this one, copy frames, and we're going to go ahead and paste frames. And I'm going to go up here and add an empty, uh, I'm just going to hit F6 or F7, either one works. We'll hit F7, um, which will create an empty keyframe. And that way I'll have an actions layer to put stuff on. Um, so right off the bat on this one, so I just have the same picture again. So it's here's where you start. You're going to click. It's going to play the game. And then when the game's done, it's going to go to this one. All right. So, um, ooh. This is fine. We'll just leave it like that. Um, I'm going to add the score onto this one too, so you'll see in a second. Um, but we'll call that good for now. But what I want to do is add an action because right now it'll happen um, is it's going to go here and it's going to start right at the beginning again, which I don't want. I want it to stop here. So while I'm on this one, I'm just going to go to code snippets and we're going to stop at this frame. I'll get rid of this extra bit here. Okay. So. Uh, good. So that'll stop. And then I also want the score to be present here. So I'm going to go to the text here and I think all I have is the score on it. So I'm just going to hit um, F5 to extend that keyframe or to extend that frame. And if you look, it's underneath that one. So uh, I'm going to take this start stop screen. I'm going to put it underneath the text. Um, that way the text is on top and everything should be underneath the buttons. Okay. So this way the score will, will stay there. Um, and that will be fine. Okay. So let's see if I do this. I mean, nothing should happen. I didn't do anything really, but, um, good. And then you could play the game and, you know, whatever. Okay. So now I need to have happen is when you hit, uh, an object in this one, when we did the hit test right now, all it does, I'm gonna click on the actions layer here. Uh, all it does is, um, it just says trace hit. That's what happens when we hit an object. That's not going to work. So what I need to do is actually have it go to the next frame. So we're going to go to and stop. See, I didn't need to put a stop on there because this is going to say stop. Anyway, go to and stop. And we're going to say frame three like that. Now I think this is going to throw an error because I think the code keeps running, um, which I didn't want it to, but I think it keeps trying to run regardless. So let's just see what happens. Gotta wait. Let's run into this dude. It's gonna go doop. Yeah, it's gonna give me an error. So what's happening is, um, it says error parameter hit test object must not be null. All right. So uh, blah 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 hit test. So the idea is, um, it's still trying to run into things um, that aren't there. Um, so uh, it doesn't work. So what we got to do is we have to tell these um, this part here to basically stop. <laughs> Stop making objects and stop um, uh, 
stop making objects and also stop uh, testing it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is the part, where is it? For variable. Okay, so right here we have this hit test thing. Um, yeah, so uh, just just want to show you something real quick here. Um, if I play and I run into something, what you're going to see is I hit it. And then it crashes, right? You see, you say, oh, looking for display. It's trying to do a hit test. Um, but notice that these objects are all still here. What I got to do is actually see how they keep going. What I got to do is actually um, uh, keep that from happening. So um, one thing, first off, what I want to do is I only want this to run if we are on um, frame two. Okay, so I'm going to tab and we're just going to say if current frame. All right. Uh, let me double check something. I didn't do this anywhere else, right? Okay. If um, current frame is um, equal equal to two, okay, then this should run. I only want it to run if that is a true statement. So I'm going to grab this whole bit here and just tab it in. And then after this and like that, okay. And that should work uh, fine. Let's back this up one more. Okay. It looks a little better. All right. So basically all of this will run only if that's the case. I'm just going to hit command enter control enter just to see, make sure that that's running correctly and it's still going to crash. Um, but I just want to make sure it's still running and boom, it is. Okay. This is all. All right. But you can see those keep happening. So what I have to have happen is, um, in this, if the obstacles hit, I have to actually remove all those obstacles because it's, it's still trying to, um, find them or, or interact with them. So, um, what I'm going to do is after you, if it hits the player, I'm actually going to take this whole little bit here and um, let's do this just to clean that up a little bit. Um, I'm going to take this whole little bit here, control C or command C, control V. I'm going to paste it inside of this if statement. And then what I'm going to do is in the if statement where it goes to frame and stop, I'm also going to tell it to, um, to delete uh, each one of those um, objects. So I'm just going to do stage dot remove child. And the child I want to remove is obstacle underscore, uh, you know, the name of the thing. And then the array here. And let me see. Duh, duh, obstacle that's going to go in here. And like that. And then we'll just, just to clean it up. Okay. So basically, uh, let me take that. Okay. So we have this for loop. Um, and then if it does hit something, what it's going to do is it's going to take each object that's in that for loop and it's going to run that loop again and remove it. So now what you should see if I, um, run this, uh, obstacle R, let me see. Any R, R, oh, it's obstacles. Not bad. Let's try that again. Obstacles. Okay. And if I click on this, um, what you're going to see is that when I, it's still going to crash, we'll watch, they all go away. See how they all deleted. Now, the next problem I'm having is moving direction of key, cone running, blah, 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 frame 39. So if we go up here, you can see what's happening is, um, it's trying to access, um, I'm thinking this stuff here. So what I might do is try to do the same thing I did uh, previously. So what I'm going to do is um, do that uh, inside of here. Um, this is only going to run um, if, oops, not like that, uh, if the current frame again is equal equal to two. I don't want this to run unless we're in that one. And then let's grab all this and we're going to go ahead and tab. So only this code only runs on frame two like that. Okay. And that will work. So if we hit control enter, da, 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 da. and if I click on it and you know, we can run around and what have you, but I'm just going to hit, you see it's going. Now the other option I'm having is the score, right? So it keeps going up. Uh, so we keep winning, uh, regardless of, of that other stuff. So I'm going to go down here and I'm just gonna do the same thing again. I'm just going to do if only if the current frame is equal, equal to two. And I'm going to grab all the meat of this and tab and then add uh, that. And we'll hit control enter. Hopefully that'll make the score stop. Let's see. Yada, yada, yada. Let's go on and let's see. Boom. There you go. And we still have the score up here. It says running cone. And, um, 
And if I click, it automatically goes to the other thing because it still has the code from before. I was going to add that in there, but apparently it still works. So we'll go, ooh, I'm good at this game. So good at it. Okay. Now, um, ooh, okay, so I got to 18. Um, so another thing is uh, I could up the difficulty um, uh, by, by interacting with this uh, number here. So I made a boo boo actually. Uh, this is uh, it wasn't working earlier, and now I know why. So what we're gonna have to do is create a couple variables up top, um, because what I want to have happen is I want the cars to get more and more and more. Right now it's always the same amount, which is fine for Flappy Bird. Um, it's always going by this uh, number, but it doesn't work so well for um, what we're doing. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do is do another variable, and we're just gonna call it. Um, obstacle multi or multi multi um, and it's going to be of the type number and I'm going to set that initially to 25 and you can play around with this if you want but 25 is an already number and then I'm also going to do a variable just called frame um, and that will be of the type uh, int because um, basically this is just going to and I'll set that initially to zero um, obstacle multi um, is going to be the multiplier uh, of how much difficulty it gets. And then the frame here is going to count what frame we're on. And that literally is just going to be added at the bottom of this. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this times our um, uh, obstacle multi, not two Ts, right? And then equal, equal to zero. So this will make a lot more sense. Uh, basically, what it's going to do is it's going to randomly create a number, right, um, times uh, the obstacle multiply. So it's going to choose a number randomly between 0 and 25, every frame. <coughs> uh, so it could be a 0, it could be a 1, it could be 23, anything in that in that amount. And then um, it's going to find that number. Uh, and then it's going to find the floor of that number. So it won't be, it won't be point whatever it'll always be a solid number and then it's going to say if it's equal to zero so you have a one in 25th chance but it's random that it's going to happen okay so right now that will work um but what i need to do is i want to make this i want to change this number because right now it's 25 so it's one in 25 i want to make it so that it's more likely to happen by making that number smaller and smaller right if i do one out of three you know it's it's going to be every third frame more than likely, you know, roughly, uh, it will create, uh, another, um, uh, another object. So, so what we're going to do is, um, we're going to say frame is plus equal one. And that's basically just going to count my frames. All right. So every frame gets, um, counted. Uh, good. Okay. So that's just how I'm going to keep track of, of time basically. And then I'm going to say the obstacle multi is going to be equal to obstacle multi minus, um, in parentheses, frame uh, divided by 48. So what that means is that um, every frame is going to take off point, um, 48. So uh, it's going to take off a little bit each time. And if I hit control enter, it should make the number get smaller and smaller. And so let's see. And that went, went way crazy high. All right. Let's, uh, let's, ch uh, double check some stuff here. So, oh, I did equals equals. Sorry. That was supposed to be a minus. Good job by me. Okay. All right. Let's see now. Okay. So now you'll see, uh, oops. Did I get hit? I didn't even notice. All right. Oh, man. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, uh, that should uh, be working. All right, so I'm actually going to comment this out for now. Uh, we'll just do that and then go like uh, this. Okay, and that will comment this whole section out um, just so that at least it's working. I'm not sure why I'm getting detection over there. i got to double check that. Uh, but now anyway, um, it should work fine, and it should keep your score. So, yeah. There we go. So you can see we got a lot in that one. Um, let's see. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, so obstacle. Okay. So we're gonna remove that and just leave this as obstacle multiplier. And then later on, if we want, we can up this. Um, where are you at? 
this number uh, over time. Okay, but we'll just leave that alone. Uh, and now the game is done. So now what you would do is just publish it to your uh, phone, and it would be working, and everybody would be happy. Um, and that should be it, I believe. So, um, yeah, so there's your game. So just try to make it look as nice as possible. Eh. I don't know why I keep getting these false detections. i got to double-check that. Um, but, yeah, there you go.